going to bed and bedtime routines are some of the best times to put your smart home tech to good use. And that's true whether you're just starting out and have only a few smart bulbs or you have an elaborate smart home setup. I find I'm always tweaking my bedtime routines for myself and the family as far as it relates to home kit and automations. And I want to talk through some of what I figured out recently for myself and for my children and not only just what the automations are that I have, but some of the accessories I use because there's some unique ways that I'm using some accessories that I think you might find really useful. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name's Eric Wielander, and this is all about smart home tech in the Apple ecosystem. So if that's something you're into, consider subscribing. So the first phase of going to bed for me is getting my son to sleep. Our younger children, my wife usually takes care of, and there's not as much smart home tech, at least in this phase, uh, involved with them going to sleep, other than some automated noise machines, just like my son uses. And I wanna clarify up front, None of this is meant to be parenting advice. This is a smart home channel about smart home tech. And whether you have children or not, I think some of these ideas will still give you useful thoughts on how you can automate your bedtime routines, either for you or other people in your home. All right, so I'm gonna go over here to my son's room and you can see that I have various scenes for different stages of his bedtime. So the first one is bedtime. And basically that just plays a song on repeat on the HomePod. And that's a song that he knows and loves. And we actually specifically do not play it any other time so that he starts to associate that with going to bed. And we've been doing this for about eight weeks or so now, and it seems to really help. There was a while there where he was, you know, either getting scared of the dark or just struggling to get actually too sleep once we put him in his room. So adding some of these routines and triggers for him, I think have really helped him uh, in going to sleep better. After bedtime, there's story time where we read stories. And so that turns off the main fan and lights in the room. That's a switch that controls both a sort of joint fan and light unit. Then it pauses the music that was playing on the HomePod and turns the lamp near the chair where we read stories down to 10% at a white color. Now this is a vocal link color bulb. You could use really any color bulb. I really like uh, the uh, option of having a color bulb like this uh, vocal link bulb or that they sent me or the Nanoleaf Essentials color bulb. Uh, something like that just gives you a lot of flexibility in a kid's room and uh, you'll see later how I'm taking advantage of that in different ways in other scenes. But for this, it just puts on a nice white light to read the story, but dim so it's you know not anything bright and helping hint towards bedtime. So once story time's done, then there's uh, the good night scene. So that makes sure the fan and the light are still off and then it turns the same lamp that was for reading bedtime stories to 1% and changes the color to this sort of bluish purple. And that is a nice kind of nightlight color for him. It doesn't keep him awake, but it also doesn't make his room completely dark. Then the noise machine also turns on. That's a really cool tip that I love is using a electro fan. Uh, that's these little noise machines. They're recommended by the wire cutter and they are what I call smart plug compatible, meaning that we have them hooked up to smart plugs. When the smart plug cuts on, the noise cuts on. So it's a great way to get smart white noise, uh, in this case in my son's room, but we actually have them in all of our bedrooms now and they're fantastic for creating that extra sound if that's something you're into for sleeping. Now, at first, the good night scene will play on repeat a song that he likes and associates with going to sleep. Now, there's also an automation that later in the evening, it goes ahead and pauses that HomePod automatically so we don't have to worry about that and then that music stops so it's not playing all night. But the light does remain on, that way he's not left in the dark. Then in the morning, the wake up scene turns all the noise machine and everything else off and then turns his lamp to 70% 
with a green color. And that green is meant to signify that, you know, it's time to get up and it's it's go time. One thing you're probably wondering is there's a HomePod in the room. What about the child triggering the HomePod? Well, uh, in this case, it's out of his reach, so he can't really get to it. But it's, and there are many different options for wall mounting HomePods if that's something you're interested in. And another key feature that's easy to forget is that you can turn off the trigger words of Hey and Siri to trigger the HomePod. So that means that the HomePod won't be listening for that, but you can still use those same commands either by talking to Siri on another device like your phone or your watch, or you could also just manually trigger the scene some other way. So you don't need the HomePod to make this work. The thing that I really like the HomePod for in this case is automating the audio, both the bedtime music and the overnight uh, music playing as part of these scenes automatically. And you can do that with an AirPlay 2 speaker or a HomePod uh, mini. I like the HomePod mini in this case for it. Now, I've been playing with a nap time version of this as well, but that hasn't really been solidified yet, so it's not really worth sharing, but I'm always trying to improve this. Now, one other thing to note with a child's room that I've done, and this could be true again with anything across your home, is I've printed out verbatim what you can say to the HomePod to get it to do each step of this routine. And so that way, if someone is helping out in the family who maybe doesn't usually do this and isn't used to the commands, even if they're a you know pretty tech savvy person, they might not know the actual names of the scenes. So writing out some of those commands that you can give to the, the HomePod and then putting them on the wall uh, works really well. Now, uh, right now I just have them gaff taped to the wall, but I, ideally I would put them in a nice little frame and just make it look all official. Now, one thing that I found annoying with this is I like to trigger scenes by saying it's scene name time, and that just seems to work really well. But in this case, with the good night scene, whether I call it good night or night night, it started to have a problem with saying, it's Carl's good night time. Sorry, I can't schedule commands. Nope. Which is really annoying, and I don't know, uh, I haven't figured out a clear way around that. Usually then I just ask the HomePod to turn on the scene name scene, and then it makes it very clear to Siri that you're talking about a scene and it almost 100% works. Now from there, once the children are in bed, we usually take care of a variety of other things and then it's time for my wife and I to go to bed as well. And so I've created a variety of different scenes related to that and then also tied them into a good night shortcut for myself. So of course there's a bedtime scene and what this does is it shuts off a lot of the lights around the home except for in the bedroom and some other key areas. Then there's also of course a good night scene and this makes sure that everything in the house is in a state ready to go to sleep including things like the garage door if I had smart locks I would lock them here I don't personally arm my security system in this scene I do that in another automation but you could do that here. And then beyond that, I've created a separate scene and I like to keep this as a separate scene for us, which is going to sleep. And usually we'll just ask the HomePod to turn this on and this will stop any music playing on the HomePod. It'll turn off the lights and the fan in the bedroom. And most importantly, it'll turn on my Vocalink PureFlow HomeKit air purifier to high, as well as our smart noise machine. Now this is the same kind of smart noise machine that we have in my son's room uh, that I talked about in that part of the automations. I highly recommend the electro fan and hooking it up to a smart plug. And so we just have another one of those turn on in the master bedroom. But either before or after that runs, I usually run a shortcut on my phone and this uh, just quickly takes care of a bunch of other rooms in the home. So I'm here in the shortcuts app now and looking at my going to bed shortcut. Now I wear my Apple Watch to sleep and I track my sleep with the Sleep Plus Plus app from developer underscore David Smith. And I actually did a video for it about it on this channel like ages ago if you wanna go see very old videos from this channel. But so at this point I take my watch off the charger stand after it's been on the charger stand as I've been getting ready ready for bed and reading a little bit. And then uh, I put that on and then unlock my phone, 
which unlocks the watch, and then I run this shortcut. So it gets the current date and adds nine hours to it and then turns on Do Not Disturb until that time. So anything that applies to notifications for Do Not Disturb generally means you know you don't get notifications, and that's on until whatever nine hours is after that time. It also then turns on silent mode on my watch and cinema mode, which is that thing where your watch doesn't have a screen on, uh, but you can of course tap the watch to get the screen to turn on. Now, as you probably noticed, this shortcut and anything I do is not part of Apple's wind down routine they have on the phone. Uh, this is separate from that. So uh, I like a little more granular control than what that provides. And so I just haven't really bothered with it because I was already doing stuff like this before the wind down routine started on iOS, but uh, you know, that is something you can look into if you're interested. So then I set a specific watch face on my watch that is meant for overnight, and that includes easy access to things like my alarms, then I choose which alarm I want, and this is also, uh, I choose in this case, the alarm for the phone. So I have an alarm for the phone that's five minutes after whatever my scheduled time is to wake up with the watch. Ideally, I usually I wake up silently with my watch so I don't wake up my wife in the morning, but I, if that fails, then five minutes later, my phone will actually make a noise, and that will wake me up if the vibration on my wrist doesn't. Then I just run two specific scenes, and this basically means that whenever I'm going to bed, regardless of anything else, there's no one in the basement. Uh, people are other places, so uh, this just turns off the office and the basement scenes. That makes sure that those lights are off, regardless of whatever I choose in the next steps which of course then I arm the system, so that's taken care of, uh, arming the security system for the night. There's a few edge cases where I might not arm it right away, but uh, usually I do it through this shortcut. Then it asks me where I wanna turn the lights off. So if my wife's still awake and I'm going to bed, of course I don't wanna turn off the lights everywhere at bedtime, so I might trigger a different scene than good night uh, or bedtime. So I also might just trigger master bedroom off and that'll just take care of the master bedroom uh, and then the rest is up to my wife to turn off. Whew, I'm getting tired just making this video, so um, yeah. Now, one of the other key accessories for getting a good night's sleep that I talked about earlier is an air purifier and just keeping your air clear and clean uh, that can be done with HomeKit. And I recently reviewed the Vocalink Pure Flow on this channel, so that video should be linked here on the screen to check out. Thanks again so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.